Good afternoon. Let the record show that the first words officially spoken from the stage of the Herbert C. Rickard Auditorium in the Sherry Fleming Center for the Arts on the campus of Tabor College were spoken by Lyndon Vicks. First note sung, okay? Okay, so <laughs> we'll figure out where to put the plaque later, all right? Before we go any further, I would like to gently remind you to please silence your mobile devices. It is a little known fact that there is a hidden room in this facility. It's called the Pit of Misery, <laughs> and it is reserved for anyone whose cell phone would happen to go off during a performance here. You don't want to be the first person in the Pit of Misery. It is my privilege to welcome you here to the dedication cer ceremony for the Sherry Fleming Center for the Arts. It has been a long time coming. Some of you have been waiting for decades for this day to arrive. We trust you are not disappointed. This facility has been meticulously planned and a great deal of careful thought has gone into every detail. Take for in instance the seats which you are sitting on. Please take a moment to admire the carefully chosen fabric. The task of choosing the fabric was assigned to Brad Vogel, Laurel Kerner, and Ethan Kerner. They met with a vendor who gave them a large sample book of fabrics and allowed them to deliberate. After much consideration, they came to a consensus. The vendor came back in and they showed him their choice, at which point he advised them that they had been looking at the backs of the samples. <laughs> So even though you may admire the fabric you can see, you apparently would be dazzled if you could see the other side. <laughs> so there have been some bumps in the road, but today is a celebration. It's a celebration of the efforts of those responsible for seeing this project through to completion. A celebration of the generosity of the thousands of people who gave of their resources so the vision could become a reality a celebration of those whose names appear in, on, and around the building. And most of all, a celebration of God's goodness to Tabor College for nearly 110 years. Let us acknowledge that goodness by bowing in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in humbleness and with gratitude. You have led Tabor College for over a century, a blink of an eye in the scheme of your kingdom, but enough time to mold minds, to change lives, and to transform hearts. Today we celebrate a new chapter. We celebrate a building and those who caused it to be, and we dedicate it to your glory as it is used to prepare people for lives of learning, work, and service for your kingdom. Bless our time together, and may all that is said and done here bring glory to you. For it is in your name we pray, amen.
Thank you, Lord. Those seem better words than Lyndon Vicks. <laughs> it's a historic day in the history of Tabor College. Nehemiah built the, rebuilt the walls around Jerusalem in 52 days. Solomon rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem in seven years, and the Sherry Fleming Center for the Arts is somewhere in between there. We've talked about it for 83 years, according to Irene Jost, who remembers as a 13-year-old coming to a concert in what we now call the chapel, and remembering them talking about, we really do need an auditorium for this, in 1934. It was announced as a dream 51 years ago when Jack Braun was wooed to come here to be the drama director in 1966. We've been spending six years raising the money for this facility. Construction of it has been 18 months, and months, not years, although it's felt like it. And as you will notice, there are still some things that aren't finished. You, the people, have been so generous. And my heart has been repeatedly touched as you have listened to the promptings of the Spirit and generously gave. And just a week ago, I received a text from someone that I had thanked for their generous gift, and he said to me in the text, when you came and talked to me, I heard that still small voice inside me say, help them out. And that has been the story of this campaign. We are now under $150,000 to building the facility debt-free, and we are thankful to each of you. The words of Jesus in John 4, 37 are true. One man sows and another reaps. The Sherry Fleming Center for the Arts is an example of this. Many have sown and now we are reaping today. And there's also a cloud of witnesses that are in heaven. They are singing in the heavenly choir now. And they all longed for this facility. Over 50 people were called home to their eternal reward during this campaign and construction. They are our cloud of witnesses today. And I invite you to join me for a moment of silence honoring their legacy. Thank you, and thank you, Lord Jesus. Some of you have worked hard. Some of you have given generously. Some of you have given sacrificially. Some have planned. Some have encouraged. And all of you have waited. As Jesus once said, with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Or as Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it's done. Tabor having an auditorium for the glory of God is no longer something that is impossible. We have one. And to all of you, thank you for making it possible. The Sherry Fleming Center for the Arts is a love story. It's a love story about a people and their love for their college. It's about a love story of a college and it's love for music and theater. And it's a love story about a husband and his love for his wife. My prayer is that the love story will continue, that it will inspire faculty and staff and students to have an Im improved and longing love for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that will increase our increase in our love and it will inspire and increase our love for the arts and our love for his people, the church. And it will inspire us to love excellence and to love creativity and to love community and to love the gospel. Creativity and community 
is what characterized this facility. Creativity and community are both characteristics of the God that we serve. In the beginning, God created. And he has not stopped creating. He continues to create, and he does that through you and me. And we all have been created in his image, and when we are creative, we are most like him. Creativity went into this facility, and creativity is what will happen in this facility. And all of us are an expression of the one who made it happen. It is also a building that was built for community, a building that is about community. To build community here on the Tabor campus so that we can grow in our love for one another and learn how to live in community and be a light in this dark world. We also want to give it to the community of Hillsboro to enhance the life in this town. And then we also want to have it and be create a worshiping community each week as we gather for chapel. Creativity and community is a central component of this facility. And that in doing that, it will increase and strengthen the community of the people of God. This building will not last for eternity. It will deteriorate, and it is susceptible to decay. But what happens in the building will last forever. The worship, the relationships, the impact of this facility on the lives of students and all who enter it is what will be important. And how the good news of Jesus will be spread from here into the corners of the earth is what we hope that this building will represent and will be characterized by. Today, we make it a holy building, a building set aside for God's exclusive use. We will be dedicating it to the glory of God. And so to each of you, thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Together with God's help, we did it.
As chair of the Capitol campaign, it is such a joy for me to see all of your faces, uh, the faces that those have given so generously and in some cases sacrificially to the Capitol campaign. You've given over $18 million not only to build this building, but to further the mission and the calling of Tabor College. It's with humble gratitude that I express my deep appreciation and thanks to each of you for the prayerful contributions you've made, contributions that will now make a difference in so many lives well into the future. To President Glanzer, to Ron Braun and staff, thank you. Thank you for your passion and dedication and faith in this project and in our Lord for seeing us through. That same passion has been ignited in so many of us and we've caught that same vision. Maybe we didn't catch it initially, but now we stand as a testament to what the Lord can do in and through us. Thank you again to each of you for your faithfulness and generosity. Praise to the Lord the Almighty, the King of creation. What a privilege to stand before you as a part of this ceremony, to honor the Lord that has been with us, that has helped us to accomplish for his name's sake as we dedicate this Sherry Fleming Center for the Arts. Listen as I share just one donor's vivid memory with you. It was 76 years ago when a young lady from Bueller, Kansas, Anna Grace Kane, who later would marry Stanley Martins. She came to Tabor as a freshman. She truly enjoyed singing in the concert choir. Anna recalls the experience of a Herbert C. Rickert choir performance. The church auditorium, much like we experience today, would typically be full and bustling with the audience conversation as the choir members would walk in and take their places on the stage. Then the lights would dim. And in would walk conductor Herbert C. Rickert. The room would become absolutely silent. Not a sound would be heard. And Mr. Rickert would reverently raise his baton. And he would lead the choir in the opening signature song of his tenure. And that would be sung every time. And the song is entitled, Christ, We Do All Adore Thee. I will read the words of that song because they are fitting. Christ, we do all adore thee, and we do praise thee forever. Christ, we do all adore thee, and we praise thee forever. For on that holy cross, thou hast the world from sin redeemed. Christ, we do all adore thee, and we do praise thee forever. Christ, we do all adore thee. Anna, with tears in her eyes, shared this story as if it happened just yesterday. She said, Ron, when we sang that hymn, it was as if we were in the very presence of God. Anna today is in her mid-90s and unable to be with us, but in spirit. Her desire is that every time we gather in this place, that we too will feel like we are in the very presence of God. I too want to thank you, each of you, for your presence today, for your prayers, for your commitments to God's mission through Tabor College, your gifts, and your encouragements along the journey. Christ, we here do all adore thee. We thank you for honoring us with your presence. And we do praise you forever. We are thankful for all of those who have sacrificed, the donors, the skilled workers, all who made it possible for us to be in this place today. Christ, we do all adore thee. May this facility always be a place of worship, 
from which our praise and honor will be forever sent heavenward to the glory of God. Amen. As chair of the building committee, I want to thank those who are listed in your program who gave of their ideas and their vision and their dreams and who sat through countless numbers of meetings. I also want to thank and salute all the women and the men who helped design and construct this building. Thank you, Luke and Josh, Rebecca, Gary, Sean, Davey, Jonah, Alberta, the singing electrician, Wayne, Al, Miguel, Bryson, Manuel, Balfazier, Andrew, Gary, Richard, Jennifer, Saria, Tripp, Tom, John, Tim, Trent, Carlos, Zach, Loretta, Chris, and Fred, our faithful sidewalk superintendent, and dozens more. It has been a privilege to get to know you and to work with you. Together we faced and overcame challenges and obstacles, rain and mud, hurricanes, cold, change orders, budget restraints, and delays. You came from all over Kansas and from Texas, Florida, Utah, Nevada, Arkansas, Mexico, parts of Latin America, and Australia. You spoke Spanish and various dialects of English, including Australian. That's what they speak in Australia. And <laughs> did not recognize you poured yards of concrete, laid thousands of bricks and CMU, flew tons of steel, laid miles of wire and cable, painted, built walls, and cleaned, all with no serious injuries. Thanks be to God. You taught me about PVC, PLAM, ACM, CMU, LED, GMP, RFI, value engineering, you gave new meaning to rock and roll, FlutterX, ask Josh about that later, and my favorite, Lick and Stick. Thanks, Gary. I pray that the same values that I saw here on this work site hard work, creative problem solving, dedication to a craft, good humor will characterize what continues to happen in this place. May the teachings of Jesus be proclaimed and lived out here. May what happens here, like the Christian gospel itself, comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. May we always, have the courage and the grace to speak the truth in love. Make us laugh and cry. Help us think, bring us together, equip us to create God's shalom wherever we are. The dedicatory address is its own unique form of public speaking. Many well-recognized speeches came at the dedication of buildings, monuments, parks, and even cemeteries. Lincoln's Gettysburg Address itself Ralph! was a dead- Ralph, I think this is the auditorium, over here. Ralph! I hear you, Martha. I'm coming, I'm coming, my goodness. Oh. So sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Gracious me, this is really embarrassing. We thought it was this evening. I, I must have misplaced that nice invitation we got in the mail. And I'm so sorry. Ask him when the open house no, is. Hold on. Hold on. It's all right. It's all right. Come on down. We've got some room here. We can, we can squeeze you in. Come on. Everybody's welcome. Anytime they want to come. 
I guess your grandpa won't need his hard hat. My husband, Ralph, worked in construction for a few years, you see, so I brought it for the tour just in case. Well, thankfully, we're well past that stage. Oh, would you look at all these people on this huge stage? And all the people out here. Oh, gracious me, I had no idea. Yeah, we get that a lot. Um, <laughs> There are actually 829 seats here in the auditorium, enough for the entire community and the campus to meet together. Ralph, did you hear that? 829 seats. My husband, Ralph, has a little trouble hearing. I can hear you just fine, Martha. I can hear her just fine. <laughs> actually, yeah. The acoustics in here are great. Yeah, thank you. That's, uh, that's music to our ears. You know, I took music lessons here in 1962. I sang in the choir with Herbert C. Rickert before your time, I'm sure. Well, did you know that this is called the Herbert C. Rickert Auditorium? No kidding! Ralph! <laughs> Herbert! Yes, Martha, dear, I heard. Ralph did not go to Tabor. Actually, Ralph is not a Mennonite. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of figured that. We don't get many Ralphs. Um, <laughs> but hey, welcome to the family, Ralph. Glad to have you here. Uh, why don't you tell me what you think of this place? He thinks this place. <laughs> wow, you know, I noticed out there, this is quite a tall structure. Must have taken a lot of steel. Uh, that's uh, for the fly tower. A fly tower? Oh, yeah. It's so scenery can be moved on and off the stage really quickly, so you can create all kinds of elaborate settings for different shows. Oh, wow! Is that LED lighting? That is impressive! <laughs> Sounds like Tabor should recruit her. I, I think we should. <laughs> and uh, what about you, young man? Where are you interested in studying? He I can draw real good, just so lifelike. William, tell them what you can draw. Actually, my art teacher told me I should see Professor Shin Hee Chin while I'm here. She's famous, right? Y yes, she is. And she is here. Shin Hee, would you stand? And also with your colleague in graphic design, Derek Ham. <laughs> and I suppose I should already know, but what are you interested in studying? Sadie, dear. The nice man is asking you a question. Oh. oh. Oh, well, I'd love to see more of the sound and lighting systems. Well, um, maybe Chris Glanzer and Ethan Kerner can help us with that. There are technological experts back in the command center there. Guys, what can you show us? Now, you've probably already figured out that this little interruption is brought to you by the Tabor Theater Department, so I think I'd like to introduce our director of theater, Laurel Kerner, and her predecessor and partner in crime, Judy Harder. You know, I remember when Jack Braun used to direct plays here and Melinda Nickel. I tried out once, but I never got a part. I'm not sure why. I, I can't imagine. Um, Jack, you would have given her a part, right? All right, good. That's, maybe you should come back and try again. All right. Well, it is getting a little late. Um, we probably should move on. What do you mean Spa knocked over the Christmas tree? Taylor, what did I tell you about? No, no, come, come on so in. Sorry. Everybody's I coming in. Come. That's all right. Oh, come on back. Are, are you with you these sure? folks? No, uh, no, no, no. no. I, 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 was, uh, I was just, I was looking for somewhere to leave my donation. And, uh, you know, I didn't know if I was going to be able to get here with the kids' basketball games and their Christmas programs and, you know, everything else that's going on. And it's just really crazy. And everything's, yeah, well, just busy time of year. When do you have time to do your shopping? 
No, seriously, like, do you have time to do your shopping? Because I don't know when I'm going to find time to... Anyway, I really have to go, but is, is there somewhere I can leave my donation for this center? You know, I believe I know someone who would love to take your money. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, this has been fun, to say the least, but uh, as I said, you can have a seat here and, and stay for the rest of the ceremony. Oh, thank you, thank you so much, but I think we'll find a seat back here, somewhere that's a little less conspicuous. Uh, <laughs> would you please recognize our very inconspicuous Tabor Theater students? We built it, they came. Yes. <laughs> so. Well, when I was so unexpectedly interrupted, <clears throat> um, I believe I was waxing poetic about the dedicatory address. You can forget about that, I was just making that up. Um, but I do want to introduce the person who will deliver our dedicatory address. Dr. Del Gray is Associate Professor of Biblical and Religious Studies here at Tabor College. He's been teaching at Tabor since the fall of 2006. Dr. Gray has a BA in Biblical and Theological Studies from Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota, an MA in New Testament Studies from Trinity Evangelical Divinity School in Deerfield, Illinois, and a PhD in New Testament Studies from Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena, California. That is all well and good, and it explains why he gets to be called doctor. But those things are not nearly the most interesting things you will find in his bio. He's been a youth leader, a missionary, and a pastor. He's been an usher at the Metrodome, a bicycle messenger in downtown Chicago, a dishwasher at a residential all-girls camp, <laughs> a canoe guide in northern Minnesota, and a copy machine operator making secret document plant, documents containing plans for Motorola's earliest mobile phones. I'm not making this up. He's been interrogated by the KGB in Russia, crashed through the windshield of a van after being hit while riding his bicycle in the Philippines, and once was in a bicycle race against Lance Armstrong. He lost that race, but I think we now know why. <laughs> Dr. Gray is the son of a World War II POW who escaped. For the last 28 years, he's been the husband of Debbie, a social worker, therapist, and cancer survivor. He is the father of Daniel and Allison. If that doesn't make you anxious to hear what he has to say today, I don't know what will. Will you please welcome Dr. Del Gray? Thank you, Lyndon for both of those introductions, part A and B. <clears throat> the very first time I walked onto Tapers campus, I was taken into the Lorenz building, to the, the front main entrance. I walked between two impressive, large, classical Greek columns and into the entranceway where I saw the pictures that still hang there of a great fire that burned down the former building in April of 1918. I asked questions about the fire, and I, and I was fascinated at the story of, of what Tabor community went through during those times. And I was reminded recently that at the back of Tabor's centennial celebration book, that there's an insightful re re reflection on those two elements of Tabor's story. The aftermath of that fire was devastating, but the Tabor community came together with strength and resolve to rebuild and to keep Tabor alive. The result, of course, was the current Lorenz building and those striking columns that rise up off the plains of Kansas were intentionally designed as powerful symbols for our community. Here was a building that proclaimed the Tabor community would not die, but would continue to gather to pursue knowledge and reason, truth and beauty and character and faith. Today, 
as we dedicate this building, the Sherry Fleming Center for the Arts is a magnificent addition to that great legacy. Look at this place. Did you get a chance to look around? Look at what we have done together. We have so much to thank God for. This is an almost overwhelming gift at this Christmas time. There's so much joy at Christmas alone that the addition of this community building is almost too good to be true. A dedication is supposed to be a solemn affair, and it, it, it implies that there's a, a devotion to a sacred purpose. And so this is, as President Glanzer said, a holy place that has been set apart for God's use in our midst. And what we do here in this building from this day forth is a reflection of who God is and what he is doing amongst us. But it's all also perfectly okay for us just to be a little bit giddy inside on this day, to be overflowing with joy that we just can't contain. The Center for the Arts means so much to us as a community, and it empowers us to follow God forward in fulfilling Tabor's mission and vision in ways that we have dreamed of for a long, long time. My reflections on the significance of this place have taken me to read some more of the writings of C.S. Lewis. Um, in The Problem of Pain, he writes this. There have been times when I do not think that we desire heaven. But more often, I find myself wondering whether, in our heart of hearts, we have ever desired anything else. It is a secret signature of each soul, the incommunicable and unappeasable want, the thing we desired before we met our wives, or made our friends, or chose our work, and which we shall still desire on our deathbeds when the mind no longer knows wife, or friend, or work. I think I understand Lewis to be saying that as humans, we have deepest longings that we can't always put our fingers on. I think Paul calls them the groanings that are too deep for words. In some ultimate way, I believe that these longings are our remembrances of what we were made for. We deeply desire to know and to understand, to, to know ourselves, to know the world around us, to know the God that created us. We long for each other in deep, intimate ways, desiring relationships and community. And we are moved by our deepest feelings of awe and wonder in the presence of beauty. And this is why we've created the Center for the Arts. It's a place of learning, community, and the arts. It's our way as Tabor community of reaching out to God, of seeking him, of knowing that, that he alone fully satisfies. But from this day forth, what we do in this building is a form of worship as we seek to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. And so those three things, learning, community, and the arts, are what we do here. As a place of learning, we are sitting here in the heart of this building, but we are surrounded on every side by classrooms and studios and creative labs and workshops where students will rethink and reflect on a daily basis on who we are and who the God is that created us. And then as an audience, we will come and we will look and we will listen to the results of their learning. And, and sometimes we will be overjoyed at what we see. But other times, it will cause us to ask questions. And sometimes we might even find some answers. In this very room, this place will single-handedly transform what we can do in chapel each week at Tabor. There will be lectures, there will be speakers and conferences and conversations that can continually form us into the likeness of Jesus. If this building is a place for learning, it's also a place for community. In a marvelous little book called Simply Christian, N.T. Wright says, how is it that we ache for each other and yet find relationships so difficult? My proposal is that the whole area of human relationships forms another echo of a voice, an echo which we can ignore if we choose to do so, but which is loud enough to get through our defenses. I think Wright is saying that our desire for relationship and community is a testament 
to, to the fact that this is how God made us to live. We search for purpose as individuals, but we also search for purpose inside relationships and communities. This space now takes the front and center role in that purpose on Tabor's campus. Within these walls, former classmates will get together and reminisce about past professors and famous pranks and favorite people that you went to school with. In the very seat where you now sit, some Tabor student will take a risk and sit next to another Tabor student and they'll begin to fall in love and start a life together. Tabor students and employees will sit together several times a week as one community in this very room as we are inspired and challenged to center our identity on Jesus by one chapel speaker after another. As a community, God is shaping us. We are his workmanship. We are his people. The product of God's creative act, his painting, his poem. And finally... This is a place for, for the arts. I think our common response, our common human response to beauty is one of the things that convinces us that there is a God. Beauty has many faces, and many of those will be created right here in this building. Some of those are the kinds that make our spirits soar and raptured. Some are the kinds that show us who we are. And some are the kinds that speak raw truth that's hard to hear. Again, N.T. Wright says, We must acknowledge that beauty, whether in the natural order or within human creation, is sometimes so powerful that it evokes our very deepest feelings of awe, wonder, gratitude, and reverence. Beauty is both something that calls us out of ourselves and something which appeals to feelings deep within us. The present world is really a signpost to a larger beauty, a deeper truth. It really is the authentic manuscript of one part of a masterpiece. The question is, what's the whole masterpiece like? And how can we begin to hear the music in the way it was intended? The thing about beauty is that it points beyond this present age to a different one altogether. We don't get to hear the whole masterpiece until that day in the future, when all of our deepest and truest longings are fulfilled. But for now, while we faithfully look forward to that day, we will come to this place to ardently listen for the faintest echo of some earlier music that we're born remembering. We will come here to gaze intently so that we can catch a preview or a foreshadow of the grand, beautiful picture that we will one day walk into. A part of the power of the Christian story and of our Mennonite brethren story is that it witnesses to a day when our current experience of truth and beauty will no longer be fleeting and temporary. The sublime moments that we will experience here while watching plays, walking through galleries, and listening to music are reminders that the full banquet will be even better than the appetizers we are snacking on now. In one of my conversations with friends and colleagues about what this building means to us, one of them, one of them said, my ancestors who came here from Russia and had lost everything could never have imagined this place. And yet here we are. God has continued to work among us and work amongst us and to do great things. When the Lorenz building was rebuilt after the fire, the community proclaimed, Tabor lives. Now, with the Sherry Fleming Center for the Arts, we proclaim, Tabor thrives. In Romans 11, Paul says, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how unscrutable his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen.
I invite you to join me in reading the Litany of Dedication found on page three. Please proclaim in one voice as we come to the words in bold print. Generous God, we give thanks today for the gift of the Sherry Fleming Center for the Arts. We give thanks that for those who dreamed, labored, and sacrificed to make this day possible. We offer this building to your work and purposes. We dedicate this building to your glory, O oh God. We give thanks for the gift of community. May our gatherings in this place create opportunities to invest in the lives of others. May our interactions connect us with our friends and our neighbors. May this be a place where new relationships are cultivated. We offer this building to your work and purposes. We dedicate this building to your glory, O oh God. We give thanks for the gift of knowledge. May our encounters in this place inspire learning. May we fill this place with lively conversations and curiosity. May it be a place of exploration as we discover the vastness and diversity of life. We offer this building to your work and purposes. We dedicate this building to your glory, O oh God. We give thanks for the gift of the arts. May our activities in this place spark imagination and radiate beauty. May our gifts of music, dance, art, poetry, and storytelling find a home in this place. May our creative energies flow freely and nourish minds, hearts, and spirits. We offer this building to your work and purposes. We dedicate this building to your glory, O oh God. Giver of all good gifts, hear our prayers as we celebrate this day. Bless us as we seek to honor our past, live our present, and build our future. To your glory, O oh God, amen. Let us unite our hearts in this prayer of blessing. Emmanuel, God with us. In a Bethlehem stable long ago, in simple and elegant spaces around the world, and in this place, the Sherry Fleming Center for the Arts, you are present. You dwell among us. We give you thanks for fully entering our lives through your Son, Jesus Christ. May our worship in this place honor the mystery of your divine presence. May we worship gladly and expectantly. May we be transformed by our encounters with you. And now, we ask your blessing as we live into this place. Bless those who take care of this building's interior and exterior. Bless our plans, events, worship, work, and play, and bless all who enter here. Bless us now this day as we gratefully and joyfully dedicate this place in your name and to your glory. Glory to the creator who gives us life. Glory to Christ, the servant of love. Glory to the spirit who empowers us forward. Glory be to God. Amen. As we bring our dedication ceremony to a close, allow me to give you just a couple of instructions as to what follows. After being dismissed, you should feel free to wander unchaperoned throughout the building. You can explore the theater wing, including the black box theater, the backstage area, including the dressing rooms and the low end storage area, 
where we store all of our Lowens. <laughs> the choral rehearsal room, the art classrooms and the gallery, and also the rooms upstairs, which you can access by either the stairs or the elevator. Now, there may be a few areas uh, upstairs that are not yet accessible, but there is plain to see. And then, of course, feel free to pick up some refreshments and discuss with those around you how big it really is. Yeah. At 4 o'clock, here in the auditorium, there will be a demonstration and explanation of some of the acoustical technology in the building and how the sound in this space can actually be manipulated. So feel free to stop back here if that would uh, interest you. We hope that you can just enjoy the facility and imagine some of the tremendous things that will take place here in the years to come. The Tabor Hymn was created through the collaborative efforts of Dr. Jonah Cleaver and Dr. Clarence Hebert, who I know are both looking down with smiles right now, especially Jonah. We will stand and sing the hymn together, after which you will be seated so that you can enjoy the band's closing number. Redeemed of God, come, let us sing. Thank you.
Please stand. Look at someone next to you and say, it's a good day. <laughs> Glory to God. Thanks for coming. Go in peace.